Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Tech Tuesday. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis and I'm from Autodesk and wanted to welcome you to episode four where we're going to talk about converting um, mesh data such as like STL data or scan data into something usable inside of Fusion 360. This question came up actually on one of the other live streams that I did. Um, I showed an example of this 3D printed robot um, in, in I think my last um, live stream and somebody asked how would you go about creating that inside of Fusion if you downloaded it off of a web page such as like Thingiverse for example. So I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks on how you can work with scan data. So what I did is I went out and um, on Thingiverse, I found this robot arm. Uh, I want to do a shout out to F Tobler. Um, this is out on Thingiverse, and I'll actually post a link to this um, in this live stream uh, if you wanted to take a look at this. But it's kind of a cool 3D printed robot that uses uh, some, some NEMA type stepper motors. Um, I had some laying around, so I wanted to go ahead and make this. So what I did was went out to Thingiverse and downloaded the files. And you'll notice when I upload them into Fusion, they're kind of this blue looking color or whatever. And for example, this stabilizer right here, I'm gonna go ahead and open this guy up and you can see that it's broken down into many different triangles. And this is the, the STL type data. And unfortunately, you really can't work with any of this. I mean, look at, for example, where these blends come together. There's hundreds of little triangular faces. So if I wanted to make a change to this, for example, to change the size of the holes or to maybe stretch this part out, that would be very difficult to do. So there's some neat little tricks. The first thing I'm going to do is You'll notice I'm not capturing any design history right now, and I'm gonna basically be recreating this model. So I do want to capture design history. So I'm gonna just right mouse click and say capture design history. And you'll see that sure enough, um, I now have a timeline, okay? So what I want to do is to use a command that shows up in the sketch menu. Uh, and basically what we're going to do, let me go ahead and turn on um, this other component. You'll see I've already recreated this. So I'm going to step through and show how I went about creating this particular part. But you can see it's an exact um, duplicate or replica of the STL data. So this first method I'm going to show uses um, some sketch commands in the I should say some mesh commands in the sketch menu. So I'm going to start out by creating a sketch. And in this case, it really doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this bottom plane. And I'm now in my sketch environment. Um, again, if the, uh, the menu across the top looks a little bit different to you, um, it's because I'm using the new uh, user interface. And to see the new user interface, that's under the, your preferences, preview, and it's this new UI preview. Um, I recommend taking a look at it, see what you think. Uh, we've spent a lot of time kind of reorganizing, um, making um, these tabs across the top, um, just simplifying things and making things more visible. Like right now I can really tell that I'm in my sketch environment. Okay, now that I'm in my um, sketch environment, I'm gonna click on this create menu and there's a command in here called mesh. And you've probably seen this before, but you've maybe wondered what is this for? And there's only two commands in here and you do have to do them in order. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a mesh section and then we're gonna basically trace over that section. So I'm going to say create mesh section and it, it's asking me for which mesh body. So I'm just going to hover over this stabilizer and click on it. 
And when I do that, you can kind of see, let me zoom up here a little bit. You can see that there's almost like a projection of a sketch slicing through this body, okay? And I can move this wherever I want. And that preview is gonna, and it's kind of hard to see with the blue and the brown, but that's gonna update according to where this plane is. So here you can see there's no holes going through it. But if I kind of drag it back a little bit, now we can see that you know we're slicing through the hole. Well, I'm gonna start with the most basic shape, which is kind of this dog bone shape. So I'm gonna click on plane and grab this bottom plane. Now, unfortunately, you'll notice I actually get an error message that says failed to slice with the specified plane. So I'm gonna move my plane up ever so slightly. Let's just say like 0 0.01 millimeters. And now you can see there's a preview, okay? So what this was telling me was um, that this part actually wasn't sitting exactly uh, right at zero, zero, zero. It might have been up above this plane ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna go up maybe 0 0.01 millimeters and say, okay. Now, what did that do? Well, if I expand open my sketches, we can see my original sketch that I created, and then there's this other sketch, which is basically that projection or that section. So if I turn off my mesh body, we can now see a really nice representation. We don't see a lot of little tiny triangular edges or anything like that anymore. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is re-edit this sketch. So I'm just gonna double click on it to go back into my sketch environment. And I will come under the Create menu, Mesh, and now it's Fit Curves to Mesh. And this brings up a little menu here. Let me kind of zoom out just a little bit. And you'll see we have different fit curve types. We've got lines, arcs, splines, closed splines, circles, ellipses, etc. And you're basically going to be using these tools up here. So let's start simple. Let's just go ahead and click on circle and watch what happens when I hover over one of these circles. It actually recognizes that. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and it's now converted this to a sketch type object line. You can kind of think of these brown or red lines kind of like, let's just say construction lines, for example. Um, they're not actual objects. You'll notice my um, show profile isn't filled in like it is with this hole. So I know that this is not a valid profile. But I'm just going to go ahead and click on these four circles. And we've now converted this section line basically into object geometry. Okay, so now let's do this outside. Now this outside is broken down into um, some straight line segments, some circular or curved segments, some arc segments, etc. And so I'm going to just, let's start with a line for example. And this is probably um, going to be the most, I would say the most difficult part. So you'll notice as I hover over this projection, you can see that I get the circle that kind of appears, okay? So I want to get to the basically the end of this arc. And so you can kind of see there's one there, and then I'm going to come down to here. So this looks like the lowest point on the arc. So I'm going to click there, and then I'm going to come down here, and you can kind of see if I were to move over, it's actually creating a line that's trying to snap to any of these points. Well, I obviously want to get to be vertical like right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click like so. And I just created a vertical line segment. Now I'm still in my line command, but I want to start to curve around. So I'm going to just click on the arc command and I'm going to move around till I get to kind of where it looks like it snaps to the end of the arc. If I go too far, you're going to see it's going to like over project, for example. So I'm going to get there and click, and now we've basically traced over that with an arc segment. This is also an arc, so I'm going to come way over here until I get kind of near the end. 
And then the same thing here. I'll get kind of till I get to the end of that line. Then I'll switch back to my line segment. And let's just go maybe like there. Switch back to my arc segment. And so we're basically just kind of tracing over um, this geometry. Arc way over to here. And then finally back down to this section here. Now notice what happened. As soon as I kind of closed that last arc, it's filled this in. That's this show profile right here, showing me that this is an actual uh, closed profile. Now, hopefully that made sense, and we're gonna do a couple of these as we go through, but basically all we're doing is we're kind of slicing through the object at a particular location, and it's creating a section view, and then we're just gonna trace over that. Um, you want to make sure you get valid profiles like what you see here and I'll say okay and stop my sketch okay now I can turn my mesh body back on so we can kind of use it as reference now one of the interesting things especially with this particular model um, is we're gonna basically reverse engineer so for example if I click on my profile and say extrude well, how far do I need to extrude? Well, I can't really snap to any faces or anything like that. So I'm gonna look at it kind of from the side here and just start to drag up. And you can see it's creating a, a 3D representation of my extrusion. Well, I'm gonna get kind of near the top. So I'm gonna get as close as I can near the top. And you can see that I'm at like 39.838. So we can assume that this is probably going to be 40. And so I type in 40 and sure enough, it goes up that last little bit and it extruded exactly 40 millimeters. I'll say, okay, let's turn off our mesh body. And you can see that we, we now have an actual object that we extruded up 40 millimeters. Let's turn our mesh body back on. And so a lot of this is going to be toggling on and off. Let's turn this other new body back off and we can see that there's like a, a hollow region inside this part. Okay. What's the uh, best command for this? Well, I'm going to use the shell command. So I'll just click on this face, right mouse click, and it shows me the commands that make sense. And one of them is the shell command. So I'll say shell and I'll turn back on my mesh body as a reference. And as I start to drag, we can visually see what this is gonna look like. So I can see if I go a little bit too far. So I'm gonna get kind of near where I think that wall is. And again, you can see we're at like 19.697. So we're gonna assume that the wall thickness is 20. Let me kind of rotate around a little bit. And we can sure enough see that. Now, I should, I'll point this out here in a little bit. Um, a lot of these edges are blended or filleted, uh, which kind of makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, but I can kind of see that I'm along this vertical wall. So we're going to say the thickness is 20. I'll say OK. But I get a really good graphical representation that there's something weird going on here. In fact, let me turn off my body. And we can see that their offset here is a little bit different than what we came up with. So we might wanna make some changes there, which we'll get to here in a moment. Okay. Another um, tip that I sometimes do is I'll actually change the appearance of my mesh body. So I'll come in here and say appearance, and let's just do maybe like a, a red plastic. So it's a pretty much a totally different color than the body. And now when I turn the body on, we can kind of see what's being displayed and we can see that we've actually done a really good job matching our shape. But obviously that we haven't done anything with a fillet yet, so we're gonna do that here in a moment. Now I know this is a, a lot of information, kind of like drinking from the fire hose. Um, 
So hopefully these tips and tricks will help you working with uh, imported geometry. I'm going to show basically three different methods uh, on working with this geometry. And, and this first one I, was, I would say is the most, probably the most time consuming, um, but it's also very easy to do, I think. We're, we're referencing existing geometry, um, you know, using it to help us create our new design. So let's continue on with this and let's fix this um, offset right here. So I'm going to click on that face and use the press pull command. And I'm just going to start to drag back until I start to see the, those red faces. So here we can kind of see uh, we're in the six millimeter range. If I go a little bit too far, it's it's in getting close to the seven millimeter range or whatever. So um, right about here, I'm going to say, well, let's just say minus six in this case. And that looks uh, pretty close. Let's try uh, minus seven. And that looks, uh, actually that looks even closer. So let's just go minus seven in this case. It's just displaying all those red faces. And I'll go and add in these other offsets. So I'm just going to rotate around add that guy in there, add that guy in there, and now I've just made that quick little offset. I'll say OK, and we've kind of fixed that area. And the neat thing is because we are capturing our design history, I can always go back and change the, uh, the parameters of this design. So I could make this a minus 4 or make it a minus 8 or whatever. I could change the shell thickness, etc. So we're basically building the uh, the timeline for this part. Obviously there's a big fillet on the inside, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off my mesh body. Um, I, I want to fillet this edge here, but it makes more sense to do these vertical faces first, or vertical edges. So let's take a look, and it looks like a pretty, pretty large uh, fillet there also. So again, I like to turn off the body. I'll click on my edge and say fill it. Then I'll turn the mesh body back on and start to drag. And we can visually see once we start getting past or too far. So again, we're kind of just using this as a reference. So it looks like around um, the 10 millimeter or 10 and a half it could be. So let's just type in uh, 10, see what that gives us. Yeah, 10 looks good. So then I can turn off my mesh body and I'll just add in these other vertical edges. So I'm just going to control select those and add these in really quick. Um, another neat little trick, um, you can actually pick edges that are kind of hidden. I don't even have to rotate. I know that this edge comes all the way over, so the other edge is going to be right there. And then the same thing right there. I can grab those edges without even having to rotate. So that looks good. We'll turn our mesh back on. We can see a, a very large um, fillet there. So now if I click on this edge and say fillet, you'll notice that it's going to chain all the way around. And that's the reason I added these vertical fillets first. So that way I wouldn't have to select multiple edges to grab all of these edges. I'll turn my mesh body back on, start to drag until we kind of see the red go away. And it looks like, again, it's probably going to be around the 10. So I'll say 10. Say OK, and we now have the nice fillet going all the way around the inside of the part. And then honestly, it looks like um, all that's left is there's a fillet that goes around the outside of the part on the top edges. So let's do that guy. I'll say fillet. I'll turn my, my mesh back on just so I can visually see what this looks like start to drag and so seven is a little bit too far so it looks like it's around in the five range so I'm going to type in five I'll add in this 
outside fillet also and say okay and believe it or not that is actually it we are done with this particular part so I was able to bring in uh, something from a web page in this case Thingiverse it was STL data uh, and basically reverse engineer it so using the uh, the mesh command in the sketch menu I'm gonna this was a simple part we're gonna do a little bit more complex part um, and then I'll show you another method uh, for the last part okay now what's neat about this is because um, this is par parameterized we can come in here and edit that fillet so instead of five we could come in and make it two for example and we've just changed this model and again that's the key thing here is we're now able to work with it just like it was real geometry okay so let's take it to kind of to the next level here's another model uh, from that uh, 3d printed robot and we can kind of see it kind of looks like it has like a, a plus shape and it's going between two circular areas the other thing you'll notice is that it's not lined up perfectly straight with my origin and that'll come into play here in just a moment so let's see how we would go about reverse engineering this part we're going to use the same methodologies so I'll start with a sketch and I'll just maybe click on this bottom sketch here and create a mesh section okay I'll click on the mesh body and you can see by default it just picks a random plane but I want to specify this uh, bottom plane here and again it doesn't intersect or anything like that but I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up a little bit okay maybe like somewhat looks sort of like halfway through the part and in this case this is 29 so I'm gonna type in 30 just to give it an even number and we, we can sort of see the preview there I'll say okay let's turn off our mesh body and you can see the sketch that it created okay now what I'm gonna do here is come in and I'm sorry edit that sketch again we'll use the mesh fit curves I like to start with the easy ones first let's do a circle I'll click on that guy and then I'll click on this guy over here for example okay now we also have these other lines but you'll notice when I'm using the circle command it it kinda doesn't make sense it's trying to do this whole thing or whatever let's try this spline command now watch what happens if I um, actually let me do closed spline if I hover over this shape right here and click on it you can see that it actually traced using the spline command it traced all the way around it in one fell swoop so this closed spline is a very very useful command and we can see that we now have a valid representation of what this is going to look like okay I also can come in here and reference this geometry now so now you can see I'm using the regular circle command and I can just snap to that circle there and then I'll do the same thing over here I'll snap to that guy and I'm getting a weird result let me see let me turn off my profile here and let me do a circle command here and here ah, so it is giving me a weird result I would expect it to, to close that so let me undo a couple steps let me not use the spline command 
So the, there's the spline command. It went all around. I'll go ahead and just use that. I'll keep it simple. I'll stop my sketch, turn on my mesh body, so I can kind of see what this looks like. Grab my profile, and I can extrude up or down. So if I extrude up, you'll see it's going to take that profile and lift it up. Okay. Now I want to go a very specific distance and I get sort of close and we can see that it looks like around 30. So I'm going to type in 30 and I'll go um, two sides. Let's go this way and it looks like around 30 also. So I could even probably say symmetric. And we've now created that particular shape symmetrically. Turn off my mesh body and we can see there's that, that arm. Okay. Now I also noticed that in this guy that there's like these little notches and stuff like that. Well, I want to cut that away. And I could do this a couple different methods. I could just um, trace over that and machine it away, or we could use a sweep command. So here's a cool little trick. We're going to, again, um, use the sketch command. We'll create a mesh, mesh section. Now here's the issue. I pointed this out earlier. You'll notice that my, my planes don't line up with this angle here. And I don't know what that angle is. And so if I were to click on here, my plane is at the wrong angle. So I need to define a plane that goes along one of these edges. So I'm going to cancel out. And let's do... In fact, I'll undo a construction plane along a path. And if I turn my body on, I can click on this particular edge right here, and we can see that that plane, and I can move it anywhere I want on that path, that plane is now exactly perpendicular with that edge. So plane along a path is a really cool command that allows you to put a construction plane anywhere along a path. I could have brought it way over here if I wanted to, for example. So now I have the ability to come in here and say, project, uh, sorry, mesh, mesh section. That's my body. What's the plane? Well, now I need to turn on my construction plane because it's turned off by default. You can see the wrong angle right here. We'll click on this plane and now we can see that we're getting an exact slice through our design. Okay. I'll say okay. Let's turn that guy off. We'll turn off our mesh body and our regular body, and we can see that we have this particular shape right now. And I can use this shape. We'll uh, come in here and say, create mesh, fit curves to mesh. Now, remember the last one I did was closed spline. Look what happens when I hover over this particular shape. It's trying to convert it to a closed spline so you get these weird tangencies so obviously um, closed spline wouldn't work in this case but I can come in and do my line command again so I'm going to get as close there I'm just going to kind of trace around with my lines like so then I'll switch to my arc kind of get to where my dot stops there then a line line just tracing over it and then finally I'll end with the arc again and we can see a really nice profile there. 
Now I actually want to do the reverse of this. So I'm going to come in here and create a rectangle. And I'm just going to kind of hover over these to get my snap guide in the corner there. And I'm just going to draw a big rectangle. And I'll do the same thing over here. Get my uh, snap guide like so and draw a big rectangle. And I'll stop my sketch. Okay. Now if I turn my body back on, I can grab these guys and use this as a sweep. Now I think I realized I'm going to run into a mistake here because I didn't project the path that I wanted, but hopefully you'll get the idea here. I'm going to say sweep. Let me turn off the... Yeah, see it's all one path. I don't think this is going to work, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. hopefully you'll get the idea here. So uh, I missed a step. I, I should have projected um, the path here, but you can kind of see what the, the, uh, the idea is. We're sweeping along like so. This, this might work. Let me get to this spot here or whatever. And I would only do one at a time, it looks like. Let me get rid of that guy. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here, where I'm just basically sweeping along and modifying what I want this to look like. Um, this wasn't the smoothest example. Um, I, what I should have done is used the, uh, the mesh body to project basically this line right here. Okay, But again, you can kind of see what I did here, where we used existing geometry from this, the scan data and used the, the sketch command, the mesh command in the sketch to create those cross sections and then extrude up. And now we can come in, in fact, we could even modify this to make it look more like what we want. Maybe we just want um, this to be stiffer instead of having um, this, this cross member or whatever what we have here. I could use this guy turn off my sketch and say okay maybe we want to you know chamfer this edge instead and do maybe like a 10 millimeter chamfer on both sides and now we're done with our part okay okay so this next method is kind of similar to what I just showed um, but instead of using the sketch um, mesh commands, we're literally just going to reverse engineer the, the model. So we're going to, again, make some assumptions. And in, luckily, in this case, the person that designed it uh, made everything pretty standard, you know, 200 millimeters, 60 millimeters, that kind of a thing. So uh, you'll see that as we go through this next example. Um, you can kind of see this is the, the scanned part right here. And it just, it's unusable. It's got so many little tiny triangles and stuff like that. I really can't do anything with it. However, I was able to reverse engineer it to this particular part. Let me turn both of them on and you can see it's an exact match. Okay, so how did I go about doing this? Okay, so instead of using the um, cross-section type stuff, we're just going to get close. And I know this sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to go ahead and let's just start with maybe um, this top view. And I'll use the rectangle command. And I'm just going to get so what I think of is fairly close here. And kind of trace over it. Now I'll throw some dimensions on here. So this edge here says 379.5. So let's just assume that's going to be 380. I'll do this edge here and it says 429.9. I was pretty close. I'll say 430. Okay. Rounded it up to the, the nearest number. Uh, so same thing here. Maybe I'll, I'll draw a rectangle that's pretty close here. Throw a dimension on it. Let me make sure I grab the right edge. So I'll say dim uh, dimension. 
Grab this guy here and it says 170.02. So I'm just gonna make that an even 170. And this guy here says 208.1. So I'm just gonna say 208. And then over here, I'm gonna zoom up and I'm just gonna basically kind of trace over this edge here. So I'm gonna get sort of close and I'm not gonna try and match it exactly end point to end point. I'm more concerned about the angle and notice right here it says it's a 45 degree angle. So pretty, pretty darn close. So I'll say okay. And then I'll do the same thing here. I'll just draw a line that's pretty much on this edge. I'm just gonna go ahead and click. Now you might say, what are you doing here? Well, so all I did was basically kind of copy that shape there, but now I can come in and use this extend command. And if you hover over an endpoint, you'll see that it actually extends to the next boundary. So I'm gonna click down here, and I'm gonna click up here. I'll do the same thing there, and I'll do the same thing there. So I basically have now matched that particular shape. Now I'm not worrying about fillets or chamfers or anything like that, okay? Same thing with the circle. I'll come into my circle command, and I'm gonna do what's called a three-point circle. So let me just kind of zoom up a little bit. I'm just gonna get near a point here. I like to go kind of a third away, so I'm gonna come over here somewhere and click, and then like another third over here somewhere. So I'll go ahead and just draw that circle, and it's pretty darn close where it needs to be. Let's throw some dimensions on it. So this is 42.8, so I'm gonna say, let's just make it 43. I'll add a dimension down to this bottom edge. 64.9, so let's just round that up to 65. And let's go from here to here, and that's 50.3, so let's just make it an even 50. And if I kind of zoom up on that, we can see, okay, 50 is not quite, so let's um, edit that guy and try maybe 51 in this case. That's too much. So let's just do 50.5, and that's right on, on track. So you might have to play around a little bit. Um, I could use the uh, pattern command here. So let's just do a rectangular pattern. I'll start to drag up, get fairly close, and we can see that fairly close is around 300. So I'm going to type in 300 and say OK. And I've now basically just quickly mocked up, oops, what the shape of this is going to look like. So I'll stop my sketch. I'll turn my mesh back on. And we can see that my sketch was kind of um, floating up here in space. I probably should have started with it down here, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and extrude up. So we'll drag up until we get fairly close. And that looks like it's going to be about 60. And I'll go two sides. We'll come down here until we're fairly close. And again, that actually looks like it's going to be about 60. So I guess it was symmetric. It was right in the middle. So let's just go ahead and change that to symmetric. And again, if I turn the, uh, the body on or off, we'll see that we're at the exact height. You, know, you can kind of see I turn that on or off. And we're matching this pretty close. So again, just a quick review. I'm going to keep going through this, but quick review is we're just using the, the mesh body itself kind of as reference. We can't catch to any endpoints or intersections or anything like that. So we're making some assumptions here, but then we're adding in some dimensions and, and tightening down our design and saying, yep, this is exactly 60 millimeters tall. And this hole is exact, exactly 40 millimeters in diameter, for example. Okay, so um, continuing on with this, let's just take a, a look at this. We can see there's a big notch here. That's probably pretty easy to do. So I'll come in here, create a sketch. I'll just draw a rectangle kind of near 
that intersection there or whatever like so and maybe we dimension off the bottom of the part so that looks like about 44 and a half let's let's try 45 and sure enough when I zoom up we can see that that's right on that line um, let's dimension from here to here that looks like about 125 I'll stop my sketch I can do an extrude or a press pull, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to click on that back face and we can see that we're cutting away that shelf there. And we now have, there's that body. Now you can see we got rid of that shelf, okay? On and on. Same thing with, this is actually kind of cool. Um, I have my mesh displayed. I'm going to go ahead and fill it this edge. So let's just kind of drag down until we start to see that edge. So we can kind of see around 57, 55. So let's just do maybe uh, 57 in this case. I'll grab this guy over here also and say OK. But then this is angled back down here. So what do we do there? Well, I could come in here and move this face. We're going to move this face. What's the pivot? I'm just going to grab on this edge right here. Say OK. And when I start to drag, we can see that it's actually going to rotate that face. And as we get fairly close, I can see that it's about a 30 degree angle for that face. Uh, in fact, let me add both of those faces in at the same time. So I used the move command, making sure that my move object was set to faces, and we're just basically moving it around this curved edge. Okay. There's obviously a hole that goes through here. So let's create a quick sketch. I'll turn off the, the body real quick. Draw a circle. Again, I could do the uh, three point, but this one looks like it's about 60, so I'm going to type in 60. Stop my sketch. We'll turn the body back on and finally extrude all the way through the part. And then the last thing, I'll try and do this fairly quickly, is this kind of this weird curved shape here, okay? So let's go ahead and turn the body back on and sketch on this face. I'll rotate that around. So again, we'll use this kind of as reference. So I'll start with maybe a circle, kind of get near what I think is correct here. So that looks like about 120. So I'm going to type in 120. Um, I'll do another, another circle. Whoops right here and that looks to be about 37 so I'm going to type in 37 and then this stuff here so I'm going to do a um, an arc a three-point arc I'm going to make sure I grab to this edge here and I'm just going to click somewhere up there and get sort of close right here now I just created an arc it's kind of hard to see but you'll notice that I'm not tangent right there. But because these are actual sketch objects, I can come in and say, I want um, these to be tangent. So I'll say this guy and this guy, but you'll notice that it moved that circle. Let me undo back and you can see that that circle moved. And we obviously don't want that to happen. So I can come in here and say fix that particular point. And now when I come in and say tangent, I'll say that guy and that guy, and you can see that sure enough, these circles stayed put and my arc actually updated. But it kind of changed its shape a little bit. It's no longer touching that curve. So let me um, grab this guy and drag it back a little bit until we match close enough. And it's still always going to keep in fact, let me uh, turn this guy off. It's going to keep that tangency condition no matter what I do with this curve. 
So let me turn that guy back on again. I'll drag that back. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this curve back here. Now I want it to touch exactly onto this edge right here. So we're going to use, um, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm going to come in here and do, sorry, I had a phone call that showed up, um, a project command. So I want to project this face right here. And we've now projected that face onto our sketch. I'll create my, my arc again. I'm just gonna click somewhere close, click somewhere close, get sort of close there, and then come back and um, do the tangency condition. Okay, so I'll say tangent this and this, and then I'll say tangent this and this. And now that arc is tangent with those two edges. Obviously a little bit off, but I, I can come in here and um, grab this edge, and you can see as I change that, it curves and matches. So I'm just gonna get, again, fairly close. So if I turn this guy off, I now have a valid profile. So I'll stop my sketch. I can grab these two guys and say extrude. We'll turn my mesh back on for reference. And let's just drag back until we get what looks fairly close. And again, it looks like about 60. So I'm going to say 60 in this case and say join. And we've now basically reverse engineered our part. Okay, all I have left to do now is add in the little uh, fillets and stuff like that that go all the way around. Um, looks like there's a chamfer right here, so I'm going to go ahead and say chamfer until we get what looks close. So it looks like about 30. And I could keep going here, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, you know, I could add in those, um, all those little fillets and stuff like that around here. Um, but because we've captured our timeline, we can come back and edit any of these if we need to. We can change the sizes of the holes. We can change the sizes of the fillets that we add, etc. So, you know, if I do a, a five millimeter fillet around here, it's going to capture that. So, again, kind of an example of how you can... Um, use existing geometry, I need to make sure that goes all the way through it looks like, to recreate your design. Okay, so in fact here I see an issue that it did not extrude all the way through, so I'm going to extend past just a little bit and we're good to go. Okay. Okay, now this last method um, has to do more with like organic shapes. Now in this example here, uh, we were using very planar, you know, cubicle type shapes. Uh, but I could basically do this on all of those parts for that robot and have, you know, the actual 3D model. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, if you go out to like GrabCAD or something like that, they'll have um, you know, IGES files, STEP files, SOLIDWORKS files, those are all valid CAD formats that you can bring in. But when it's like scanned data, uh, like with handheld scanners or, um, you know, professional type scanners or even photogrammetry, uh, which I'm going to show you here in just a second, you really can't edit those models. So let's take a look um, at this one right here. So this is actually photogrammetry. And what that means is you can actually take multiple photos of an object. You basically walk around the object and you take multiple pictures of it. And we have some really cool software called Recap Photo. And it allows you to bring in all of these photographs and then it converts that into a 3D model. But again, unfortunately, it's a whole bunch of little triangular faces. And then if I zoom up here, you can see the complexity of this. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here, 
um, but we can actually work with scan data. Um, so for example, if I were to come in here and edit this mesh, I can actually reduce the number of triangles. I can erase and fill certain areas. So for example, um, let's just take a look at oops, these feathers right here. Maybe I want to get rid of these feathers. So I'm just gonna kinda draw over them just a little bit. And it's going to basically erase and fill that area. So when I say okay, um, it's going to get rid of those feathers. And it's just gonna basically fill them with other geometry. So now you can kind of see that those feathers are gone. Same thing with there's like some holes because I didn't take enough pictures or whatever. I can fill these little holes and all that kind of stuff. But again, that's another live stream down the road. <laughs> what I wanted to show here was, um, let me go ahead. I'm just going to undo real quick because I don't want to edit the mesh. Um, I'm going to use this geometry to help me create um, a, an editable uh, 3D model. Now, I'm not going to go the whole distance because that would take some time, but we're going to use our T splines. So I'm going to say create form. And there's um, a bunch of different objects in here under the create, such as boxes, planes, cylinders, spheres, etc. I'm going to start with, let's just do maybe, for example, like a quad ball in this case. And it's asking for a plane to draw it on. I'm just going to do it on this bottom plane. And I'm just going to kind of click somewhere and it creates a quad ball out here in space. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and move it to kind of cover up the head here. So I'll look at it from this, this front view. I'll just move that up a little bit. So I just basically started with a sphere that's kind of around this head, okay? Um, I'll go ahead and maybe I want to uh, scale this down just a little bit like so. There's a really cool command in here called pull. And it basically pulls the T-spline to the nearest object. So let me show you what this does. So I'm going to say pull, and you see all these little vertices kind of highlight. Okay, I'm going to select all of them. I'm just going to draw a box around them, and you can kind of see that it pulled that sphere pretty close to this underlying shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and let's turn off the, the scan here and you can see that it took that sphere and matched the shape of the head fairly closely. Okay, but because this is T-splines, I can come in here and you know edit any of these. So I could grab, for example, this vertex and pull it out a little bit and modify what the shape of this is going to look like. So I could bring that one down, etc, etc. So um, it it kind of gets you sort of close, right? You know, and I'm, just, I'm not, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but you can kind of see how I can start to get the general shape that I want fairly quickly. You know, tuck that in a little bit, etc. Same thing with the uh, the body here. I could start with uh, a cylinder. I'll go over here. Let's kind of look at it from the the side here, and I'm just going to draw. A cylinder about the size of the body and about the length of the body. So I'm just going to kind of stretch this out a little bit like so. Unfortunately it's kind of pointing in the wrong direction so let's just go ahead and move this around a little bit like this and so it's kind of encompassing this area here. You can kind of see that and if I wanted to I could even you know for example, help this out by, you know, dragging this down a little bit, maybe rotating it a little bit if need be or whatever, um, to kind of start to match the shape. You you can actually kind of sort of get close. Let me go ahead and, for example, grab that whole edge, 
pull it toward the body a little bit. And again, I know I'm kind of flying through here. I'm not really teaching how to do T-splines. That's gonna be another uh, live stream down the road. But I'm just kind of showing you, you can actually like reverse engineer. So for example, if I came in here and said, pull, I'll just draw a box around all of these vertices. And you can see that it got pretty darn close. We'll turn off the bird. And we're starting to kind of match the shape. Okay, obviously this is where one of the feet were, so maybe I uh, don't want that to be that low. So we'll lift that up again. Maybe bring this down a little bit. So you could take a picture of, a bunch of pictures of anything, whether you're a, you know, in a museum or something like that. Um, and you could like walk around a statue and take pictures if they allow it um, and then bring it in to Fusion and kind of reverse engineer it, for example, and turn it into an actual object that you could then, for example, maybe 3D print um, or, or cam or whatever. So um, I'm at the top of the hour. I know that last section I kind of just showed really quickly. Um, you could use other T-spline commands such as bridge, um, you know, weld, et cetera, to kind of start building the rest of the bird. But hopefully you found uh, some of the tips and tricks that I shared with you uh, useful. Uh, make sure you subscribe um, and even hit the little bell icon and that will notify you uh, when future live streams are happening. I'm doing these every Tuesdays and every Thursday. So uh, keep an eye out. I appreciate all the positive comments that you guys have been sharing on um, the, the live streams I've done so far. Please share any ideas you'd like to see. Uh, what you saw today was actually uh, pulled from one of the comments on one of the live streams. So it really helps me out to uh, know what are you interested in, uh, what's important to you, and I will try and put together a live stream for you. So with that, I wanna thank you and have a good rest of your day.